my name is Maria Trishurin Siambon from grade 11 Newton, and I am here to teach you about proving series through mathematical induction. So first of all, what is mathematical induction? So mathematical induction is a method of proving theorems and mathematical conjectures. It is also used to present a formal or valid proof and is a statement of premises. Series, on the other hand, refers to the sum of a sequence. Mathematical induction basically has three steps, the first being the basis step or the verification, the second being the inductive step, and the third is the conclusion. So for our first example, we need to prove that 1 plus 3 plus 5 plus 7 plus 9 plus 2 and minus 1 is equal to n squared. So the first step is the basis step or the verification, where we show that p of 1 is true by letting n be equal to 1. So in the first step, we need to show that 2n minus 1 is equal to n squared whenever n is equal to 1. So by substituting n to 1 in the equation, the equation becomes 2 times 1 minus 1 is equal to 1 squared. 2 minus 1 is equal to 1, therefore 1 is equal to 1, which is true. So since the premise satisfied the first step, we shall now proceed to the second step or the inductive step. The inductive step is basically where we make the induction hypothesis, where we assume that P of K is true, and by that we need to substitute N by K in the equation. So now, the equation becomes 1 plus 3 plus 5 plus 7 plus 9 plus 2K minus 1, since we substituted N by K, is equal to K squared, again we substituted N by K. Now, the second part of the inductive step is to show that P of K plus 1 is true whenever P of K is true. So, the equation becomes 1 plus 3 plus 5 plus 7 plus 9 plus 2K minus 1 plus 2 times the quantity of K plus 1 minus 1 is equal to the quantity of K plus 1 squared. So, we didn't remove 2K minus 1 since we need to show that P of K plus 1 is true whenever P of K is true. Now we need to show that the premise indeed satisfies the second step by making both sides of the equation equal or identical. So having this equation, 1 plus 3 plus 5 plus 7 plus 9 plus 2k minus 1 plus 2 times the quantity of k plus 1 minus 1 is equal to the quantity of k plus 1 squared. We can say that this part of the equation is similar to this one. So since they are similar, we can say that 1 plus 3 plus 5 plus 7 plus 9 plus 2k minus 1 is equal to k squared. So we can substitute that part of the equation by k squared. So the equation becomes k squared plus 2 times the quantity of k plus 1 minus 1 is equal to the quantity of k plus 1 squared. Now we need to simplify the equation and show that they are identical or equal. So, by distributing 2, we have k squared plus 2k plus 2 minus 1 is equal to, then expand this binomial and we get k squared plus 2k plus 1. And combining like terms will make this side of the equation be k squared plus 2k plus 1 is equal to k squared plus 2k plus 1, which is true. So, since the premise satisfied the second step, we can now conclude that p of n is true for all integers and that 1 plus 3 plus 5 plus 7 plus 9 plus 2 n minus 1 is e indeed equal to n squared. So now for the second example, we need to prove that 2 plus 4 plus 6 plus 8 plus 16 plus 2, n, 2 raised to n is equal to 2 raised to n plus 1 minus 2. So again, for the basis step, we let n be equal to 1. So 2 raised to n is equal to 2 raised to n plus 1 minus 2. Then substitute n by 1 and we get 2 raised to 1 is equal to 2 raised to 1 plus 1 minus 2. 2 is equal to 2 raised to 2 which is 4 minus 2 and we get 2 is equal to 2. Since the premise satisfied the first step, we now proceed to the second step or the inductive step. Again, we assume that p of k is true and by that we need to let n be k. So now the equation becomes 2 plus 4 plus 6 plus 8 plus 16 
plus 2 raised to n is equal to 2 raised to n plus 1 minus 2. Again, we got this equation by, by letting n be equal to so now for the second part of the inductive step, we show that P of K plus 1 is true whenever P of K is true by letting N be equal to K plus 1. So that makes the equation 2 plus 4 plus 6 plus 8 plus 16 plus 2 raised to K plus 2 raised to K plus 1 which we got from substituting N to K plus 1 is equal to 2 raised to K plus 2 minus 2 which we again got from sub by substituting N to K plus 1. Since this is 2 raised to n plus 1, then it becomes 2 raised to k plus 2. The premise is indeed true by making both sides of the equation equal or identical. So by observing, we can say that this part of the equation, 2 plus 4 plus 6 plus 8 plus 16 plus 2 raised to k, is similar to the this part in of the previous e equation. So as what we did in the last example, we simply replaced this part of the equation to this part of the equation which shown in the previous formula is equal. So the equation becomes 2 raised to k plus 1 minus 2 plus 2 raised to k plus 1 is equal to 2 raised to k plus 2 minus 2. Now we simplify this equation and as you can see we have 2 2 raised to k plus 1. So we can say that 2 times 2 raised to k plus 1 is equal to 2 raised to k plus 1 plus 2 raised to k plus 1. And then we copy minus 2 and then is equal to 2 raised to k plus 2 minus 2. So applying the law of, that law of exponent in this equation, we can add 1 and k plus 1 and we'll get k plus 2. Now proceeding to the third step or the conclusion, since the premise satisfied the first and second step, we can say that therefore p of n is true for all integers or that 2 plus 4 plus 6 plus 8 plus 16 plus 2 raised to k is indeed equal to 2 raised to k plus 1 minus 2. And that's the end of our lesson. I hope you did learn something and thank you for watching and listening.